You're listening to Shakespeare's Sonnets Exposed, Episode 10, Sonnet 9. What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What, what if I say, I say I'm not, not just another no. one in your place? You're, You're the, the pretender. pretender. What, what if I say I will never, never surrender? Once again, I'd like to thank my patrons for their contributions, and more importantly, for showing faith in a project I've been obsessed with and possessed by for years. Please keep your suggestions and criticism coming. Right, let's analyze Sonnet 9. Is it for fear to wet a widow's eye that thou consumest thyself in single life? The word widow is historically invested with a lot more meanings than simply a woman whose husband has died, including bereft from Latin and unmarried man from Greek. Additionally, from the mid-15th century, it meant woman separated from or deserted by her husband. These meanings are all plausible in context. Shakespeare and his wife were both widowed by their son. Shakespeare and his wife most likely became distanced as a result of Hamlet's death, as is normal and understandable. And if each sonnet is its own individual, then it will be widowed by Shakespeare's death, and is destined to make its readers cry. This last is borne out in a lover's complaint, the attached poem, which describes the reader's experience as follows. Oft did she heave her napkin to her eyen, which on it had conceited characters, laundering the silken figures in the brine, that seasoned woe had pelleted in tears. Consume from the late 14th century meant to destroy by separating into parts which cannot be reunited, as by burning or eating, which ties in strongly to the previously established theme discussing the individual sonnets versus the sequence as a whole, and also references Cupid's fire, which consumed Narcissus. By the late 16th century, when Shakespeare began writing the sonnets, consumes second meaning of to engage the full attention and energy of had already taken hold. So these opening lines suggest a number of things. Shakespeare producing the sonnets, or not producing the sonnets, the sonnet not leading on to another sonnet, and all this to avoid making Shakespeare or his wife cry for their son, or Shakespeare and the sonnets cry for each other, or the reader cry for Shakespeare's and their own perceived loss. Ah, if thou issueless shalt hap to die, the world will wail thee like a makeless wife. The world will be thy widow and still weep, that thou no form of thee hast left behind, when every private widow well may keep, by children's eyes, her husband's shape in mind. Make, form, and keep tie these lines together. They're quite straightforward and consistent with all previously established themes. Private suggests deprived, private individual, or common person. The eyes are Shakespeare's sonnet reflections, his lost Hamnet's eyes, and the husband to those reflections is Shakespeare. A private widow, in this sense, can be the reader, but we can also read this as each individual sonnet being a private widow of Shakespeare, keeping his image alive in the mind of the reader. Look what an unthrift in the world doth spend, shifts but his place, for still the world enjoys it. But beauty's waste hath in the world an end, and kept unused, the user so destroys it. The word unthrift appears only three times in the sonnet sequence, in sonnets 4, 9, and 13. And in sonnet 4 we've established that Shakespeare is generously spending his words, his very soul, on the sonnet sequence. To shift, in Middle English, didn't mean to move, but did include meanings such as arrange, place, order, divide, and distribute. What we're seeing here, in other words, is Shakespeare's soul being divided and arranged into the sequence in order that the world can enjoy it just as it enjoys Shakespeare's physical existence. Wasting beauty by putting it into sonnet form has an end, or purpose, and is finite. If the beauty or Shakespeare's spirit is not shared or captured in the text, it will be destroyed. There's another way of seeing this, however. If what is being spent is the reader's time and attention, they are putting themselves into Shakespeare's place and letting Shakespeare take over their minds. Failure to read the sonnets is, as far as the sonnets are concerned, a destructive act. No love toward others in that bosom sits, that on himself such murderous shame commits. 
This is the second time the word shame appears, and it is called murderous. Not having a son is a murderous shame, and Shakespeare not writing himself and his lost son into the sonnet sequence is a murderous shame. And finally, and just as murderously shameful, is us not taking the time to read Shakespeare's sonnets. While the sonnets have been recognized and adored by scholars and fans the world over, they haven't enjoyed the same kind of mass appeal as his plays, and Shakespeare's intention for his works was always to appeal to a broad cross-section of society. It is my aim to rescue the sonnets from obscurity, from the darkness, and to that end I am producing a graphic novel adaptation, recording these podcasts, and tattooing 154 images representing the sonnets onto my body. If you haven't already, then please sign up to support me at www.patreon.com slash fisherking and please join our community discussions on Reddit at slash r slash sonnet comics with an X. Thanks for listening. What if I say I'm not, not like, like the others? others? What, what if I say I'm not just another not one in your place? place? You're, You're the, the pretender. pretender. What, what if I say I will never surrender? surrender.